Hello, my name is Lisa Ross, though you may know me better as Paper Daisy Creations, and I'm here to show you um, how to create some really unique shaping and still come up with a triangular shawl. So this pattern right here is the coming together shawl, and this is the very beginning of it. We're going to start with just three stitches right here that are going to build outward um, and then use some unique shaping within to create a triangular shape um, different than one that you might have already knit before. Now, the interesting thing about this shawl is it has this line of central double decreases that goes all the way through. And for section one of the shawl, we're going to be creating a symmetrical um, arrow shape, actually. It's going to create this pointy arrow shape. And you can see with the color changes how that shape is going to work. And then when we get to section two, things are going to change a little, but we'll still keep this central double decrease line. So let me show you what I mean. So this is the shape that we're going to be creating, and it is a large, slightly asymmetrical uh, triangular shawl. And for section one, we are going to be working this part right here. And we're building outward to have um, symmetrical increases as we work our way out. And this right here is our central double decrease line. It's going to be worked to about there because our, our shaping will actually create this shape right here. And then the rest of that will be worked on section two. Um, I'm not going to confuse you with that just yet. I'm going to teach you how we're going to create section one's shaping. Now, you can use um, a variety of increases or decreases to create this shape. Uh, it's different depending upon the pattern. I'm going to be showing you how to do it with the coming together pattern, um, but this same shaping is also used in my ice cream social shawl. Let me show you that here. And this one actually will use yarn over increases at the edges. Um, I've also used this type of shaping for the Sunspotter shawl and the Make Your Own Luck shawl, but each one is a little bit different with how you create the shaping. Um, so be sure you are following your pattern um, more than the video tutorial. This one will be specific to this shawl, but it will also give you a general idea of how to shape this type of shawl. So to get started, we're going to need our needles. We'll need our color one yarn and we will need a removable stitch marker. And that's all we're going to need to get started on this design. So I'm going to start by casting on three stitches. You can do any type of cast on that you like, uh, but for three stitches, um, a long tail cast on is great. I like to work my long tail cast on without a slip knot. And in order to do that, just um, set up your yarn the way you would for a normal long tail cast on, but don't put a slip knot. Just pick up that yarn and I cast on, there's number two and there's number three. And there are a lot of video tutorials for long tail cast ons. I'm just going to go ahead and get started on this shaping so you can see it. Now, again, I'm following my pattern. Be sure you are following yours. For, for um, the first row, on, I'm going to be doing my right side row. I'm going to just knit across. So I'm going to be knitting these three stitches. One. two, three, flip it around to the wrong side. Again, follow your pattern. But for this one, we're using a lot of knit front and back increases. Um, if you haven't worked that before, I will show you. It's a very easy increase to use. I really like using it. Um, you're going to knit into the first stitch just like you normally would. But before taking that off the needles, you're going to also go and knit into the back of that stitch. So you've knit into the front and the back before taking it off of the needles. Uh, I'm going to purl one, and then I'm going to do another knit front. Don't take it off the needles and knit into the back. All right, I'm flipping around to work my right side row. 
And I can try and do this with my throwing hand, uh, though I am a continental knitter through and through. So I'm going to try and show you how you would do this English style, but really it's just working those same simple stitches the way that you normally would. All right, so just like you normally would do it, knit into the front of that stitch, then knit into the back of that stitch, and then take it off of the needles. So I did my knit front and back, uh, knit one, and then I'm going to do that again, hopefully with a little bit smoother finesse, knit front and back, then pull it off and knit one. Okay, let me go back to continental, but again, that's not the tricky part here. Don't try to use your opposite hand if you're not used to using it. <laughs> okay, row four. All right, I'm on my wrong side, so I'm going to knit one. I'm going to knit front and back. Oh, and I actually caught the yarn there, so let me fix this. So KFB, knit one, and now I'm going to purl one right here. And that purl stitch right there, I'm going to mark the right side of that stitch. And you could pause right here and take your little removable stitch marker and put it on the front of that stitch. I'm actually going to wait till I get to the end of this row and I'll show you where to do that if you're waiting. All right, so I'm going to knit one, oops, KFB, so knit front and back, and knit one. Okay, now I did not mark the center stitch, but I'm going to right now. So I should at this point <clears throat> have nine stitches. So three, six, nine stitches. And I want to mark the very center stitch. So that's going to be stitch number five. And it's going to be this center spine. So there should be stockinette stitches so far right on that spine. The other stitches have um, a garter ridge. But that center spine, because I purled it, it's going to be nice, clean stockinette. Let me mark that stitch. So it's stitch number five. And that stitch, I'm going to keep it marked as my central spine all the way through my knitting. Now we can't really use um, regular stitch markers with any ease. <laughs> You can use them, but it involves a lot of shifting stitches, a lot of moving stitch markers. It really becomes confusing. So trust me, I have tried to figure out an easy way to incorporate using regular stitch markers, and I have not found one. So I highly recommend this removable stitch marker. It's going to keep your project flowing smoothly and you won't have any issues. And the reason why the regular ones don't work is we are eating up those center stitches. And so they're going to change dramatically with every row. Okay, so I'm ready to work my um, garter ridge increase. Now again, follow your pattern. If you are using yarn overs as your increases, that works just as well. What I'm really focusing on right here is teaching you how to use that removable stitch marker on the center spine. All right, so for this design, I do my knit one, I work a knit front and back, and I'm going to knit to one stitch before that marked stitch. So for this row, I only knit one, and now I'm at the one stitch before the marked stitch. And so what I'm going to do here is work a central double decrease. And to do that, I'm going to take these two stitches off the needles knitwise. So I go into both stitches knitwise, just as if I were going to knit, and I slip them off the left needle. Then I'm going to knit one stitch, and I'm going to pass those two slipped stitches over. And you can do it one at a time. I like to just scoop them up at the same time and pull them over. And at this point, we can move that removable stitch marker up 
to the stitch I just completed. And what we've got here is our central spine um, that's being created. All right, I'm gonna finish my row. So for this one, I'm going to knit one KFB, knit one. All right, now the first time that you work your wrong side row, I would recommend flipping that removable stitch marker to the back of your work. So I have my central spine, which is seen clearly on the front, but it's harder to see the purl stitches on the back. And so I took that removable stitch marker, flipped it to the back, and now I'm going to be ready and easily see where that marked stitch is. So I'm going to knit one, KFB. I'm going to knit to that marked stitch because I'm not decreasing on the wrong side, but I do need to purl that stitch. Just don't let that marker get in your way. So I purl that stitch. I knit to the last two stitches. I work a KFB and a K1. All right, and now I'm going to move that removable stitch marker back up one stitch above where it just was so that I will easily see it from the front. And if you're ever not sure if you've put it on the correct way, here's what you do. First of all, you'll be able to see this center spine as we, as we get going with it. It's going to take a little time to really develop that nice stockinette line, um, but that is one way to look. And the other way is to count each side of the stitch marker. So over here, I've got five stitches. Over here, I've got five stitches. And for section one, for this part of the shawl, I always want there to be an equal number of stitches on this side as there are on this side. Now it will change with section two um, and there are more detailed um, stitch counts at the section two part of the pattern. All right, so I'm gonna do that one more time, but you're basically continuing this same patterning as we go. I'll show you how to do it this time without moving the stitch marker every row. So this is knit one, KFB, knit to two stitch, or sorry, knit to one stitch before the marker. I slip those two stitches knitwise, knit one, slip those two over. You could do it one at a time, I do it two at a time. Um, I am going to move that stitch marker. I find it easier to move at the end of the row. So I'm going to KFB, K1. Now, if you are getting confused or the stitches are getting mixed up or you have a hard time seeing it at the end of a row, do it right on the needles. Do it right when you're right after you've completed that stitch. But I'm going to go ahead and move that up right here. And this time I'm not going to move it to the wrong side row and I'm going to show you what I do to find it. Now, as we go, you're going to see a more distinct pearl line down the back of the shawl. And let me show you what I mean by that. So this is the right side of my shawl. You see that nice straight central double decrease line, but on the back, you can kind of see this pearl line emerging and my, my tail is woven in right by it. So this pearl line is emerging and you'll see it a little bit more uh, as we change colors and as we change stitch patterns, but that is going to continue all the way through the shawl. But when you're knitting this shawl, you can feel it. So I'll show you how I do that. So I'm going to Knit one, KFB, I'm going to knit to that marked stitch and I can feel it with my finger. The way that I hold my knitting, I can feel that stitch marker right there. So I know it's coming up and there it is. 
Okay, so I'm going to purl that stitch, that's my marked stitch, and I'm going to knit to the end. Oh, sorry, knit to one stitch before the end, KFB, and knit one. So I did not move the stitch marker, but I did find it in the right place. And the right side row is where you really need to see that because you need to do that central double decrease beginning at the right place. So one thing to note is it does kind of like curl up right here. It kind of creates a bump and that's just because of the shaping that we're doing. But never fear, it's going to block right out. Uh, let me show you what that looks like. We have our coming together shawl. And I'm going to also show you how it looks on the ice cream social shawl. So this one also began with garter stitch, but you use a different increase to create these yarn overs at the edge. Um, the lace detail makes it um, makes the yarn over a better increase for the um, for this particular pattern. So two shawls shaped the same way, but completely different. Okay, there's one more thing that I wanna show you before I let you go, and that is section two. Now section two is going to continue that central double decrease line, but what we're doing is the stitch count is going to stay the same for section two. So you're going to have the same number of stitches for every remaining row, you're just shifting where that central double decrease line is. And it's going to create these really beautiful asymmetrical chevron type shapes. Um, and it makes for a very beautiful finished shawl. Um, it, it's knit on the bias, so it creates beautiful drape and it's really easy to wear. So we're going to be working each, um, each row with increases on this side. You'll be increasing on the right side row and on the wrong side row for this side, and you will not increase at all on this side of the shawl. The central double decrease line will, will continue all the way till the end. And so what we're doing is for each pair of one right side and one wrong side row, the right side will uh, decrease one stitch because we've got a double decrease and a single increase. So there will be a single decrease created on the right side row. And then the um, opposite row, the wrong side row, will have an increase there and no decreases. So between the pair of rows, it evens out. And that is going to uh, create this shaping. So this this portion of the shawl is going to gradually decrease and this portion of the shawl is going to gradually increase. And then at the very end, once we get here where there are no stitches left, we're going to bind off these stitches and it creates that final shape. And you can see that shaping done in my Sunspotter pattern my make your own luck pattern, ice cream social, and coming together. Um, and I will show you the very end of this shawl so you can see what it looks like. So this is the very end. We no longer have any stitches on this side of the central double decrease line and we bind off all of these stitches and, and it ends our um, asymmetrical triangular shawl. Let me run you through the stitch patterns. So you will see in this pattern, we've got garter stitch, we've got stockinette, we have little garlands, we have ribbing, we have plaid, we have garter stitch stockinette, we have a take on a ferro rib. We have little bricks created, more garlands, some checks, some ridge checks, some garter, some stockinette. And we end with this really fun waffle ribbing. So this is full of all kinds of great stitch patterns. I'm working on some tutorial videos to get, um, to get you through this with ease, and I wish you all very happy knitting.